Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. In this video, I'll be analyzing whether we have missed the market bottom, then I'll give you my own prediction, then finally, I will tell you how I plan to invest in this kind of market. But before that, just a quick update on what's going on in the market. In late February, some virus reached the shores of Italy, which triggered the start of the fastest market crash ever, triggering circuit breaker after circuit breaker after circuit breaker. That's a lot of CB in just a few days. And if you look at this graph, it just took the market only 22 days to drop by 30%, meaning all the recent crashes by a huge margin. Just take a look at 2007 crash, which took well over 8 months to reach 30% drop. Or year 2000, which took about 12 months to drop by 30%. At the beginning of this crash, Warren Buffett, a very famous investing NPC of our time, bought 45 million worth of Delta stock but then quickly sold 314 million worth of Delta stock just last week. So, in this market insanity, even the great Warren Buffett ignores the buy low sell high or buy and hold strategy. Nice. And then in early April, the US unemployment data was released. 6.6 .6 million were unemployed, which was much much worse than the 2007 financial crisis and the early dot-com bubble recession all combined. And then everyone was bracing for the market to drop. And the market just go meh. The market just ignores the data and went up instead. Was it already priced in during the big lean market crash? Or was it cancelled because the Fed took out a controller and pressed up up, down down, left right, left right, DA, start. Activating the unlimited cash cheat code and effectively cancelling the market crash and by now, even the pros are confessing that they don't really know what is going on in the market anymore. While half of the non-professionals are asking every other day what is going on in the market. And the other half, claiming that they know what is going on in the market. In Chinese, there's a term called Ma Ho Pao, when loosely translated means the horse runs after the cannon sounds. Which means that the people who claim that they know what is going on in the market, actually doesn't know what is going on in the market. Well, judging from the charts, it does seem like the market crash is now over. And those that bought during the crash are now celebrating. While those at the sidelines, who are still waiting for a larger market crash, can only look on as a ship sailed far, far away. Now, we have caught up to the present day. And the big question on everyone's mind is, did we miss the stock market bottom? And did we tap the like button to help out with the channel? Let me share with you my analysis. But before we proceed, if you are new here, do subscribe to my channel. I post every Monday talking about personal finance stuff like credit cards and investing. Tap the bell button to get notified every time I post a new video. So, back to the main point. Did we miss the market bottom? To answer that, I will use a quote by the legendary NPC investor, Benjamin Graham. He said that, in the short run, the market is a voting machine. But in the long run, it is a weighing machine. What he meant by the quote is that, in the short term, the market will move however the majority of the people want it to. The market will drop when most of the people want to sell their shares. And the market will go up when most of the people want to buy the shares. So now, we have two camps. First, the bull gang, who believes the market should go up. And the bear gang, who wants the market to go down. Whichever camp that has the most money, we will be able to determine where the market will move next. So, let's analyze the bear gang first. First of all, the virus situation will become worse. More people will become infected as the virus spreads. And unfortunately, more people will die before this is all over. The experts have said that up to 70% of the Americans could be infected and 1 million could die if no treatment is found. And this is made worse when you have people trying to hot toilet paper and ignore social distancing measures. And by most estimates, the vaccine will only be available in 2021. And you can expect the situation to be around for a while longer. Second, in March, the unemployment rate was at record levels, reaching over 6.6 .6 million. But as things drag on, with all the virus situation and the lockdown order, you can expect that more and more businesses will either fail or forced to cut their employees. Let's face it, there are a lot of business that are highly unprepared for this kind of climate, and they will definitely fail without a few months of income. Like restaurants, 
airlines, cruises, and tourism-related industries, even though the government will be supporting them by providing stimulus package. But despite all of that, there will still be some small businesses that will fail. The third reason, GDP in Q1 and Q2 will be the worst ever. With businesses shutting down, cities on lockdown, unemployment rate rising to record levels, the whole global economy will be slowing down. GDP in Q1 and Q2 will definitely be bad this year. There's no doubt about it. JP Morgan also just released an article expecting that the GDP will be down by over 40%. That's a crazy amount. So, with all these factors, the bear gang has a lot going on for them. But the bull gang has a lot of strong cases too. Let's take a look. First up, the market has gone down by quite a lot. In the last few weeks, the market has fell by over 37%, wiping out all of the stock gains since Trump's election, effectively bringing us back to 2016 levels. That drop is huge, right? What it means is that the market has priced in most of the bad news. Stuff like, the virus will still be around for a very long time, businesses will shut down, GDP will decline, and a recession will come. Most of that has been already priced in. And that's why, when the 6.6 .6 million unemployment data came out, the market didn't even flinch because the market knows that it is coming. And second, the Fed will try to prevent a recession from happening. In March, the United States announced a 2 trillion stimulus plan, followed by the Fed unlocking the unlimited cash cheat code, making the cash printers go brrrr. And who says money can't buy happiness? The market has been happily going up ever since. Unless you're betting your life savings in spy foods. Well, in that case, I don't know what to say to you. Other than, Well, in any case, it seems like the Fed has managed to reduce the impact of a recession. Will that succeed? Only time will tell. And the third reason, the economy will restart soon when all the lockdowns all across the world is lifted. Even Wuhan, where all of this is started, has lifted its lockdown. And life is slowly returning to where it once was. Restaurants will reopen, cinemas will be back in business, and everyone can go back to work again. With over 20 vaccines being developed all around the world, it's just a matter of time before the cure is completed. And since the market prices everything in advance, you'll see the market recover much earlier than the actual recovery itself. So, with that all being said, here's what I think. To put it bluntly, no one knows how the market will move tomorrow, or next week, or next month. But if I have to guess, all of the bad news like the virus situation, unemployment rate, bad GDP, and the recession are priced in already. And same for the good news. A cure will be found, the economy will be restarting soon, and so on. And since it is kind of like a stalemate now, the market will trend sideways up and down about 10% for a few months. But gradually, it will go up. In the long term, the market is always guaranteed to go up, right? In the short term, if any unexpected bad news comes out, the market will continue crashing. Take for example, China has lifted its lockdown because cases have been declining, right? But if we were to see the infection speeding up and another lockdown happens, then the market will crash all over again. That's just my guess anyway. As I have said, no one will know how will the market move. It's much better to use your brain cells on other stuff then try to guess how will the market move every other day. So, here's my plan. Dollar cost average. Market goes up, buy some stock. The market goes down, buy even more stock. So simple. Using dollar cost average, I will win both ways regardless of how the market moves. When the prices go down, I get to buy at a discount. And when the prices comes back up eventually, I've already bought what I wanted to. That's a JP Morgan study, which found that 6 of the 10 best days generally occur between 2 weeks of the 10 worst days. So, it's much better to dollar cost average than trying to time the market and guessing the market's bottom, then subsequently missing on the best days in the market. Regretting it when the market finally recovers and you didn't buy when everything was at the massive discount. Let me leave you with a quote which goes something like, if you don't love me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. 
So that's all for today guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you think will happen in the market. Will it go up or will it go down? Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting every Monday. See ya!